Good evening. You're watching a special edition of uh, Beyond Markets. Today we are outside the office and we are chatting to Minister Lindiwe Zulu. And we're talking about a much talked about issue around job creation and the strategies to reach it. And one of those that President Jacob Zuma outlined was the creation of uh, a ministry for small businesses. The minister has graciously uh, accepted to talk to us today and we are in her office. Minister, thank you for your time. Thank you for the invitation. Can I come in and ask a little, if you like, um, unusual question. When the president called you and said, I'm making you minister, what did he say he wanted you to do? He said, I, he's appointing me as the minister of small and medium enterprises. And of course, it came as a surprise because I'm an, an international relations and foreign uh, affairs uh, practitioner. I remember that. But at the end of the day, this is what happens in our environment when we are in the politics and particularly of the African National Congress. You get deployed to where the leadership thinks you are going to make a difference. And that's exactly what he said to me. He said, you have the energy, you have the capacity. We show that you're going to be able to shift from your international relations into small business development and cooperatives. Okay. So that's the invitation. And then what did he say were your goals? What does he want you to do? Firstly, uh, he indicated to me that creation of a small business development ministry had been in the pipeline because the people who are in small and medium enterprises and cooperatives had been calling for the formation of this ministry for a very long time. And therefore, the African National Congress, in his words, had listened to the, the request. And the reason why he felt that uh, it was important for this ministry was simply because there was a need for a, a, a ministry that was going to focus. It's not to say that government hasn't done anything around small and medium enterprises. Yeah. It's just that the divisions of small and medium enterprises were under the Department of Trade and Industry as well as Economic Development. And therefore, the focus on small and medium enterprises demanded that there be a, a ministry that was really going to give it its full attention. Yeah. I would say it, it really elicited a lot of uh, discussion when the idea was first mooted and everybody had uh, everything to say. But I want to go back to the National Development Plan because it makes reference to job creation within the small business sector uh, 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 aspect. And it talks about the fact that 90% of the jobs that the NDP is targeted are expected to come from the small scale sector. So let's talk about uh, the goals, the targets that you want to see attained. Uh, I don't know when your term is going to end, come to an end. Maybe the president will give you five years, maybe he'll give you two years. What are the goals? What does he expect you to do? Well, in the five years that we're going, we are going to be in office, the president expects us to have made sure that we've looked at the existing regulation and legislation. Right. And that legislation, we need to look at whether it is conducive enough for small and medium enterprises and many of the people that we've been engaging with yeah. already have indicated for instance that the small business uh, amendment act of 2004 and there's also the cooperatives act of 2013 yeah. and people have already indicated that they feel there are some elements of it they would, that would need to change so that we create a conducive environment for for small and medium enterprises who have you been talking to oh we've been talking to a whole lot of people yeah. we've been talking to nafcoc for instance right. Right. Because NAFCOC was among the uh, front runners in as far as uh, calling it, yeah. for this uh, 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 ministry and department is concerned. Yeah. We've been call talking to a, a lot of small and medium enterprises. We've been having submissions that are being made by small businesses themselves. Yeah. Recently we were in Cape Town when we were presenting our budget. Yes. We thought that what might also be helpful being in Cape Town, we did an outreach program. Yeah. So we presented our budget and we had an outreach in Kaili. There in Kailicha, small business people and cooperatives managed to present to us to say this is what they would like to see. Right. So it's about creating conducive environment, firstly through ensuring that the legislation is proper, secondly mm -hmm. ensuring that the regulatory environment is also conducive. But more than anything else, it's yeah. about opening up the space for small and medium enterprises, yeah. looking out for the markets for them, where are the markets, ensuring that... Um, 
they get the necessary skills for them to run their businesses yeah. but also partnering with big business because it's become very clear as the NDP says gives you the figures of possible uh, 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 possibilities of small and medium enterprises from now until 2030 yeah. so we have to as a department have to make sure that we assist small businesses we upscale our support to yeah. small businesses because this, the support that has been there has not been enough. Right. So we need to upscale. Yeah. Okay. We're going to get into the detail of the discussion about how you're going to be able to do that. But let's just review that environment that you have inherited. So you have got these uh, pieces of legislation that are a little bit all over the place. So what are you going to do? As combine these and create one super, if you like, uh, legislation that governs all small businesses? How are you going to approach this? No, we cannot create one super because each one of them is, yeah. is important. Right. So we need to look at each one of them and make um. sure that each one of them, really the legislation that is the response to the needs of small and medium right. enterprises. That's what is very important. Yeah. If we need to combine where we were, we'll do that, but yeah. we need to do the, the, the consultations first right. so that at least we know what we are about. But the good thing about it is that those structures that were at the Department of Trade and Industry yes. since uh, 1994, have done a, quite a lot of work because sure. this, uh, this, legisla this legislation that's existing, it was processed uh, right. by them. So we are inheriting uh, uh, those uh, structures into our new department. Okay. But however, what we want to do, because we are new, we want to create, configure a machinery that is going to be assisting to the times. Right. There were those work streams, but we cannot conclude that those work streams would automatically be work good. with you. So yeah. we need to start by, by ensuring that we create a structure that is going to be conducive. Yeah. We've been hearing complaints about the bureaucracy yes. and the fact that it takes forever to get any support. Well, so that's why we need to make sure that we create a lean mean machine yeah. that's going to be able to respond to the people as quickly as possible. Yeah. We need to make sure that we create a structure that is also going to be able to coordinate from national to provincial to local structures. Right. Because small and medium enterprises is about people doing things right at the lowest level. True. So we will need to make that, co that cooperation amongst ourselves. In fact, we've even agreed that we're going to have to do transversal agreements, yeah. which would then uh, enable us to work with those local structures and provincial structures as government, we need to go out there and look for the opportunities within government, yeah. but also outside of yeah. government. I'd imagine, Minister, one way of easy way of measuring what you're going to do in your five-year term, if you are still there at the end of the five-year term, I say this carefully because the president has changed his mind from time to time, um, would be to see where South Africa is standing in terms of ease of doing business on those World Bank rankings. Would you be using such measures yourself? Of course we have to use those measures. What's your target? Where do you want South Africa to be? Because now some Mauritius and I think Rwanda are ahead of South Africa. We will always strive to be number one okay. as much <laughs> as we can. And we need to, to make sure. And well, we, will, we will strive to be number one, not on the basis that, oh, simply South Africa has got a big economy. It, it must be the systems that we have in place. Sure. Uh, South Africa must be, uh, uh, and, uh, it must be easy for people to do business, whether they are coming from outside, but we must start with our own. Sure. Because we're talking about small and medium enterprises. Yeah. The ratings of South Africa in as far as small, uh, small and medium enterprises is concerned, I'm told that we are really, really not where we are supposed to be. True. Because that environment is not conducive, the regulatory environment, the labor Some environment is not conducive. Some people say it's hostile, conducive. actually. You know, some people say it's hostile, but I don't, I don't think it's hostile yeah. because you need to take into consideration that we are just 20 years into democracy sure. and we're talking about a, a bulk of people in South Africa who were never in that space before. That's true. So we've had, we have to create that environment and encourage them through entrepreneurship. We must encourage them to come in because it's very clear from the facts and figures that so, uh, the possibility of the jobs that can be created yeah. by small and medium enterprises by, and cooperatives, they can absorb more yeah. of workers. Okay. So we, we just need to uh, make sure that people have got their opportunity, but we must encourage them to take advantage of the space that is creating itself. Yeah. Can I put you on the spot, Minister, and say at the end of your five-year term, could, would you be number one in terms of ease of doing business in Africa on that World Bank in, uh, Index rank, ranking? We have to. We okay. don't have a choice. Minister is committed. We have to, but of course we must consider the fact that uh, uh, five years is a very short time. In life. 
and, and, and also you must also consider the fact that it's a long-term plan of the National uh, Development Plan. Right. However, we'll do everything in our, we can in our power to make sure that we keep the pace and put ourselves up there. Did you get any target in respect to the number of jobs that you are supposed to facilitate, create? Well, the target for the jobs is the same target that government has put through, that right. the president has spoken about, because it's not because just the my... The 5 million by yeah, 2020. It's not, okay. that, it's not just my department that has to do that. Hence, we need to make sure that we coordinate and cooperate. The entire government must work towards ensuring that those jobs are created. Yeah. Let's move on and talk about a contentious issue. Some economists have talk, uh, spoken to, and these are some of the leading economists on Africa, AFDB, uh, including from the World Bank as well. They talk about South Africa and they find it as a place where big business thrives. And uh, the suggestion is that there isn't much competition within the South African economic environment. And one way of doing it is to bring in the small, business get, uh, small businesses and upscale them. What strategies are you going to employ to make sure that the big businesses that we are all very proud of actually do work with the small businesses and help them grow? Well, I've made the point, uh, actually, that big business must also understand that government cannot be a buffer between them and poor people. Sure. The responsibility of ensuring that there's more and more people get jobs, the better, even for big business. The understanding that is that the more you have people in the economic activity yeah. of the country, it's also good for them because at the end of the day, you'll find that the more people are employed, and when people are employed, they also get a skill. Mm. And, and the skills is one of the biggest challenges in South Africa. So True. I think that while I also do appreciate that there is a monopoly in South Africa, mm -hmm. the monopolization is very strong. I mean, some of the small and medium enterprises would like to do something. I mean, just take a small example that you've got a, a group of women who are cooperatives mm -hmm. who are able to produce overalls, uh, protective clothing and so forth. They must be given the opportunity to do that because they're going to absorb more instead of that being taken by big business yeah. who is already well established. Right. They cannot absorb everybody. So they need to support us on the way. And we are conscious of the fact that there will be contradictions and competition and all that. Yeah. But we are moving from a political angle in particular yeah. that says black people in particular have been, they have been left out of the process and the only way that they can be brought in into contributing towards the economy yeah. of South Africa is not just about uh, being people who consume yeah. they must also be in a space where they can be able to produce Absolutely. and to get our own people to be in that space of production we have to start small yeah. and grow bigger Absolutely yes. Anglo American as I always say was once a small company what about this other issue around um, creating entrepreneurs we know that you know, when you look around the world, entrepreneurs are people who look at a situation, see an opportunity, and then act on it. I want to try to get an understanding of government thinking and of your own thinking on how you get people uh, to take advantage of business opportunities. Is it government's role to try and push people into this, or are you focusing more on creating the environment for them to see the opportunities? Because What's your of approach? the historical background of yeah. where South Africa is and the fact that people were not exposed to this for a very long time. It becomes a responsibility for government also okay. to say to people, look at the opportunities that are availing themselves. We must also create that conducive environment for them. But right. let me take you to the fact that as a department, we're also looking at what is it that we can do to encourage a education department to also include this uh, aspect okay. of entrepreneurship at school level. Okay. So that when people, when pupils finish school yeah. they're not only just thinking oh well i have to only go to university if i haven't been to university there's nothing else sure. i can do they must see the opportunities as they are in the school yeah. that inculcation in the, the spirit of entrepreneurship yeah. must begin to be there because it's not there at this point in it time needs so to be forced it needs to be in, in, inculcated yeah. into our system so okay. that even when people fin when the pupils finish and they go to school and they go to university they might begin to look at uh, 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 specialities which they never used to look at, not the traditional ones. Yes. They might want to say, if I want to be an entrepreneur, yeah. what is it that I need to study? Right. It means I must focus on business studies, okay. I must focus on accounting, okay. I must do mathematics, I must do social studies too, because, yeah. because those yeah. are also yeah. very yeah. important. But as a department, we are very clear about the fact that we also want to partner 
with those that are already we've realized actually i came in and realized that there's quite a lot of big a lot of businesses out there that has got entrepreneurial uh, projects that they are doing for young people in particular yeah i mean the first people to get in touch with me were shanduga uh, black umbrellas and they invited me to um a, a program to just see how they were encouraging a small business right. in competition to thrive. And there's many others. Mm. I've been invited mm. by mm. Anglo-American. I've been invited. In fact, I was pleasantly surprised because sometimes you get this sense that people are saying, no, big business is not doing anything. Exactly. It's not assisting us in anything. Yeah. I was yeah. pleasantly surprised when I look at the programs yeah. uh, that they are doing in order to encourage small and medium enterprises. Yeah. Yeah. So we need to partner that and work with each other. Yeah. They also need to open up the space because even among themselves, yeah. the opportunities for small and medium enterprises to pr produce nuts and bolts and all these yes, little things. Yes. I mean, the other day I came across a youngster who produces mats which are put in the cars. And I said to myself, well, this is a youngster who's got a small factory employing seven people. If he were to get a market for this, yeah. if we were to say to Toyota or, 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 or uh, BMW, BMW yeah. or anybody, can you also give him, him an opportunity? But I know what BMW and Toyota would say. They would say the quality yes, is not up is to standard. Yeah. But I'm, I'm saying to them, let's together collectively his, assist yeah. him to make sure that the quality yeah. that he has to produce is the quality. Because if they can give him a market, yeah. it's possible for him to improve the environment where he's working, yeah. employ more people, yeah. and improve the quality that he has to produce. Minister, where do you stand on tenderpreneurship? Um, tenders are important uh, because at the end of the day, government cannot not issue tenders right. because how, how then do you get the services that you need as a government yes. so it's important that that process of tenders because tenders also enable if implemented properly yeah. if done properly right. they enable they open up opportunities for people to tender for a service that needs to be there. To government, yeah. The challenge that we have had is that they've been manipulated by yes, different people. 100%. They've even been manipulated by big companies who thought that the best for them in order to get into a tender, they must just get a, a few black faces. Sure. People who don't even have a clue on what is going on. That needs to turn around. Right. And I think that government has already identified the challenges within the tender process as to what the challenges are. It's also about education, uh -huh. you know, at the end uh -huh. of the day. Uh -huh. Because if we can get more and more of our people being conscious of the fact that you don't have to be affronting for anybody. Yeah. You, you can yourself, be yourself can be able to stand up. But what is important is the weakness also in the system is that some of the tenders have been given to people who don't have the capacity to deliver. Sure. And government has suffered. Yeah. Some of the tenders have been given to people who do not have enough resources they do not understand that in order for you to get this tender, yeah. you need to have something so that you can be able to implement. Because the money sometimes doesn't come immediately. That's true. You need to have something. And we're going to talk about which that Which is now. also a challenge. A because many one. of them, they might have the capacity, yeah. but where do they get the money to even start? Yeah. The financial institutions are not very willing mm. Uh, mm. to assist them. Yeah. Even if they produce the tender documents to say, no, we are going to be getting this money, but the banks do not know whether they will be able to fulfill yeah. uh, the tender and then be able to pay back. That's true. I think that 20 years, in government we are smarter right now as Foreign. a government okay. in looking at what are the things that we need to change and improve i know now people are talking about the super um office that is supposed to be the one that manages the tendering yes. process yeah. there's still a discussion about that because it needs to be effective mm. it mm. must not mm. also create another bureaucracy another hurdle uh, when where then people end up staying for a very long time without knowing whether they're getting the tender or not. Let's go There's back no to the government that operates without uh, without tender a tender. No. It's how you manage it. Yes, it's Absolutely. How you manage it. Yeah, but I wanted to understand it in the context of now creating people who actually understand that you see an opportunity and then you come and you take advantage of that opportunity. But I think you have covered that very well. Let's talk about another issue. We talked about earlier the, the fact that the business environment in South Africa is perceived to be hostile to small businesses. Are there aspects that you are tackling at the moment two months into your job? No, absolutely. As I said earlier on about the legislation and the regulatory environment, yes. what I also realized uh, in getting into this was that uh, a lot of the regulation also sits at local level. Right. 
Now, what I need to do, I your thought to myself, laws yeah, your and municipal and laws yeah. and all that. Then I realized that, no, you see, you can't operate there at the top without connecting to the bottom. Sure. Because this is one country. You find that the municipalities in uh, Gauteng would have something completely different to what is happening in other provinces. Mm. And yet, there are certain regulations that can be standard. And also, I believe that we need to engage with those structures to make sure that the regulation does not stifle a, a, a local, um, does not stifle small and medium enterprise. Just an example. Yeah. There in Tswane, even here in Johannesburg, there's been a situation where your hawkers, which also fall under us, yes. your hawkers have been struggling because the municipalities are saying to them, you can't operate from here. They're not giving them the necessary... An alternative uh, place. They don't giving them an alternative measure, number one. Number two, you also have the, 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 the police coming in and saying that, you know, you're not supposed to be operating from mm. here. Mm. What is important for myself in particular is to say... Yeah. There must be an understanding of the need for the people to do what they are doing. Right. That is selling their wares out yeah. in the street. Yeah. But there must also be an understanding by even the ones who are selling their wares yeah. that regulation is also important because Absolutely. we don't want to create anarchy. Chaos, yeah. But at the end of the day, it's about bringing all these people together and saying to each other, how can we assist each other in, in order to make sure that the conducive environment is yeah. created for people to make a living But that's a big themselves. problem, isn't it? How do you mesh the two? Because they are almost uh, sometimes sort of uh, antagonistic to it's each other. Dialogue. Dialogue. If yeah. you're not going to go into dialogue yeah. and you think that is going to be a, a kicking of people in the streets and you think that you're solving the problem, you're yeah. not solving the yeah. problem yeah. by yeah. so doing. But at the same time, even those that are out in the streets, if they, it's not about them just standing in the street and, and, and standing there and saying, we're not moving from here, we don't moving from about your and regulation, we don't. Yeah. No, it cannot work like that. This South Africa that we want to create is one that has citizens that respect the law but also we, it's, a, it's one with the government that understands that the laws that are being passed must yeah. be conducive yeah. also for people yeah. so it's a two-way process it's a two-way process we need to work with, with each a, other it's a yeah. very complicated one i'm sure you've moved around the african continent you've seen the kind Absolutely. of chaos that's and in other by parts the way of the world. by yeah. the way i think that when i when i i looked back at to what does this really mean? My mind went to all the countries that I've traveled to because I've, yeah. I've covered more than 40 in, countries in, in, international in the relations, continent. Yeah. And one thing I've realized is that in some of those countries, the, the institutional recourse is not there mm -hmm. for many of the business mm -hmm. people. Whereas mm -hmm. here in South Africa, you've got institutional recourse. Yeah. And the financial uh, uh, opportunities, you find that people there, just on a day-to-day -day basis, they get up and do what they have to do. Yeah. They do not have really... Uh, 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 offices to run to all the time. Here in South Africa, we've got offices where people need to go to. We just need to make sure that those offices are accessible. And they actually those work. Those offices make it easy for people and they actually yeah. work. Yeah. And then you've got the banking system in South Africa, which is one of the best banking systems. But does that banking system help the ordinary people? Yeah. In many instances, it doesn't because people can't even knock on the doors of the banks because the banks will put so many things, so many hurdles in yeah, front of yeah, them before yeah, they... Yeah. But if you also need to also uh, engage in, in the education process yeah. of getting our people to also understand that banks are there to make money. Yeah. And therefore, you must understand that when they want the following things, they need to make sure that they will get <laughs> their have money you, back. Have, have you engaged the banks? No, we haven't engaged the banks, but going to we talk will. To them? Absolutely. What As do you I want said, out of them? What we want out of the banks is for them to understand that there are people who are unbankable. What are they going to do about those people who are unbankable? Yeah. In many instances, the unbankable are your small and medium, uh, enter not your small and medium, enter but your small and your hawkers. Right. They are not bankable. The guys in the street. The guys in the street. Two, we want to say to the banks, do remember that we have a whole lot of black people who are outside of the system yeah. who do not understand your banking processes and procedures think about what is it that you can do to make them aware of that right and it's easy yeah. for banks yeah. to do that absolutely today. absolutely it's easy. as economists say if you make economic choices the, the, the right absolutely. one the, the, the banks will find we a way we also want of to say it. to the banks yeah. 
think about the fact that you can actually get your money back if you also became part and part and parcel of educating people as to why you as banks sure. want the following things from them. So we need to meet each other because the building of the economy of South Africa cannot be the responsibility of government yeah, alone. Absolutely. The building of the economy of South Africa rests with even the most ordinary people who have to contribute towards the building of the yeah. economy. Minister but of course, government must take responsibility. Absolutely, and leadership on yes, it. And leadership we've got, on we've it. got two minutes remaining from yes. the show, and I want to ask you two things. The one thing is I'm going to ask if you're going to create a fund for small businesses, adding to the other numerous funds that are already out there. Number two, I want you to spell out for me, if you will, your main ideas in driving the ministry and making sure that you attain your goals before we Firstly, end the show. Firstly, with regards to the, the financial support, yes. we already do have a, a uh, uh, the financial support which was under DTI. Right. We just need to upscale that okay. as far as I'm concerned. But we also need to look at what it has been able to do yeah. in the past years and see if what they were doing was effective enough. Sure. And if we need to change certain things, they will need to do that. How big is that? Um, I'm not sure you exactly the of the figures. Of the no, I don't okay. have the, okay. the, the figure at okay. the moment, but, okay. but I know. And that is also coupled with non-financial support. Right. That is the assistance of people setting up their businesses, uh, helping them to write up their business plans and right. all that. Yeah. We need to upscale that. Okay. And we need to use the provincial and local structures because sitting at national, there's just no way we can be able to cover all that. That's true. So we must strengthen the already existing institutions yeah. that are there from a government point of view to assist from the financial and non-financial as well as uh, cooperatives. Our focus and my focus in particular, what I would like to see is sustainability of the ones that already exist. Right. And the sustainability is across the board because I've been having people asking me, oh, are you now going to be focusing only on the ones which are starting up? Yes. I think the ones that exist at the moment are a very good example to those that want to, to come, come in. Yeah. So the sharing of the experiences of those that are already there, yeah. that are making it and are sustainable would be a good example to the other. So yeah. one, we sustain those that are there, we assist them in the best way that we can, and they're in all sectors sure. of our society. Okay. Then secondly is to make sure that the new ones who are coming in, they must come in to an easy process of registering, of getting the support. We must ease uh, the, the, the way of doing business for them, make it easy for them mm -hmm. to do business. Mm -hmm. But of course we are just at the beginning, Unfortunately for us, there can't be a vacuum. Absolutely That's why not. we have said that those structures which were doing the work at DTI, yeah. while we are reviewing them, let them continue with the work because we can't afford people not knowing where they are supposed to go to while we are configuring the department. Minister Lindu Azule, we thank you for your time and we thank wish you. you well on your journey and we'll be watching you very closely indeed thank because, of course, job creation and small businesses important. are at the heart of what we do at uh, CNBC Africa. That's our program for today.